Welcome to one of our first sessions with Old Trading Post. Uh, my name is Alex. I do some of the marketing here with, with Dave and Old Trading Post. And Dave agreed to sit down and talk about the story of Old Trading Post. Many of you may be following us for a while on this account. And we just wanted to share with you how it got started and, and what's going on here. So welcome, Dave. And Thank you. Yeah. So tell me, when did Old Trading Post start and, and why the name Old Trading Post? Well... Old Trading Post started actually as a necessity. I was working it in middle management, and it was the later 1990s, and lots of transition going on. And at that point in my life, I decided I wanted to do something that would allow me to be self-employed. After having spent so many years in middle management, I wanted to go to the next level. And at the same time, my brother, my business partner, Mike, he was just closing down a business that he had owned with another gentleman who was a friend of his that they had worked together for almost 15 years. So it, it, it was a good time for both Mike and I to try to start something new. When you started it, when you came up with, okay, oldtradingpost.com and, and all these things, like how did you know that, okay, people want to buy these kinds of things? Well, we were Old West enthusiasts. We grew up on the Old Westerns from the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, and always had an interest. So we lived close to each other. And we started out by going and shopping garage and estate sales and building our collection of stuff that we had found that people had collected previous us and started assembling an Old West collection. At the same time, we were not only buying leather collectibles from the Old West, we were buying a firma or documents from the Old West, including old saddlery catalogs, old receipts, or anything having to do with the Old West saddleries, because our interest always hedged towards the leather goods of the time. You know, watching Hopalong Cassidy, the Lone Ranger, all the different specialty leather goods that really were phenomenal in the Westerns we watch. And so when you follow these, these leather goods that you were tracking, is this kind of like, I want leather like the old Western guys wore or more like, hey, I want to look like the shows I was watching? Well, at first it was just to buy the products. And then as we were collecting the documents, I was able to start building a product knowledge of the holsters, the chaps, the cups, the, and it went on and on because back in the old West, everything that you may get in some sort of synthetic material had to come naturally, especially in the Western United States. So you every basically pretty much anything that could be made out of a hide or leather was made out of a hide or leather. Thing to the products you use to store your shaving goods in, your luggage, your saddle bags, your saddle, your cat, your everything had to be created naturally because there was no synthetics at the time. They were just starting to industrialize in the later 1800s on the East Coast. And then by the time it got to the West Coast, it started in the 1850s, about the time that Sutter's Mill had the gold strike. So industrialization started to happen on the West Coast around the 1850s. But it really didn't get to the interior of the country until the early 1900s. And learning 
from those saddlery catalogs is what really brought us into the leather business and the gun leather and, and all the saddlery goods. Right. So like your pommel bags and saddle bags, that's a leather good you sell. We carry almost three to 4,000 products at a time on old trading posts. And if we were to add saddlery and tack, we could probably double or triple that number just because of that, the amount of products available in that industry alone. Oh, wow. So you were more like the accessory side of, of the salary, your pommel bag or saddle bag, or what other things could we put on a saddle that, that you do sell? Exactly. If you study the old saddleries in the late 1800s, the way they advertised were carts. They had small card that had a picture of a saddle on it. They were called cabinet carts. And it might say Al First Now out of Montana with that particular model of saddle that he was promoting. Eventually, it got to print it with catalogs and such. And at that point, the saddlery started to separate how they sold goods. They had a saddle catalog and they had an accessories catalog. Quite often what they refer to as sporting accessories, because you got to remember that even football helmets back in those days were made of leather. I mean, literally they made Charles Shipley in Kansas City had a catalog of 250, 300 pages, and he made pretty much whatever. Because at that time, the stockyards in Kansas City were was where probably 80% of the cattle in the country was being driven to, to be butchered and dispersed. Or shipped to Chicago, where it would be bit butchered and dispersed because of their central locations. That's what made us decide, hey, we could go this route with the sporting goods and accessories without having to do the saddlery goods. And so it says, you know, on the site, you've been around since what, 1997? Am I right? 1997 is when we started to shop the garage sales and estate sales. And as we were accumulating our um, collections, anything that we had purchased, because sometimes we would buy a whole collection of stuff for one amount of money without really, you know, going through every piece. And then we would acquire quite a few pieces that we had already had or that were pieces we didn't collect. And at that time, we were selling those overflow pieces through eBay. eBay was just starting. So we started selling for extra money. It was fun. It was a way to help us generate extra money to buy the stuff that we wanted for our collection. And we noticed on eBay that we were getting huge amounts of traffic on the products that we were putting on compared to other products. And the light went off. Bing! This is something we've always wanted to do anyway. We didn't want to have a physical store because when you have a physical store in one area, you're simply dependent on that local business. And we were more into items that wouldn't support at that time a physical address per se or a store. So I had a friend who was in the early stages of internet, and my degree happens to be in electronics engineering technology, so I was familiar with computers. And by 2002, we were developing a website. It took us a couple of years because we wanted to bring on board the right 
products searching out wholesalers. So through our exposure in the industry, we knew what was popular because we we kind of lived a bit of a Western lifestyle ourselves. And we started contacting those manufacturers and suppliers. And uh, that's what helped us build old trading posts. 